Thank you, Sarah. Um, hello, uh, my name is Toby uh, from the SOC Institute, and uh, I'm a postdoc in Jan Kalsida's lab at SOC, and we are interested in telomeres and their role in age, human telomeres and their role in aging and cancer. And I'm very excited that I can present here uh, our collaborative work with Oxford Nanopore Technology on sequencing or using non Nanopore long read sequencing to sequence human telomeres. So, what are telomeres? Telomeres are the linear at the ends of the linear eukaryotic chromo uh, chromosomes, and in mammals they consist of TTA, GGG repeats. Moreover, they terminate in this single-stranded three-prime overhang, and they are decorated by a telomere-specific hexameric protein compl complex called shelterine. This overhang can more uh, furthermore fold back and form a structure called telomeric loop, or T-loop, here shown in this electromicrograph. And together, the T-loop, as well as shelterine, are working to protect the ends of the linear eukaryotic chromosomes from being recognized by the DNA damage response. And that is important because if they are marked by the DNA damage response, as you are seeing here in this metaphase image, where telomeres are in green, DNA in blue, and um, gamma H2X is a marker for DNA damage, they get processed by the DNA repair machinery, and then you get chromosome-chromosome fusions and genome instability. Moreover, for human somatic cells, telomeres are shortening with every round of DNA replication um, due to the end replication problem and uh, subsequent processing. And we can visualize that and measure telomere lengths by a variety of techniques, including terminal restriction fragment analyses. For this technique, you isolate high molecular weight genomic DNA, you digest with enzymes that cut frequently outside the telomeric motif, so outside this TTA GGG repeat, you separate the fragments on an agarose gel, you perform a southern blot, and probe with a telomere-specific probe. And what you get then are these telomeric smears that you see on that blot, and these samples are human primary fibroblasts at different population doublings, so with increasing um, cellular age. And you can appreciate that the telomere length is decreasing with ongoing uh, PD. If telomeres get extremely short, they, as I told you, get recognized by the DNA damage response and trigger a P53 RB dependent checkpoint um, that leads to a permanent cell cycle arrest called um, replicative senescence. However, if cells are deficient for P53 and RB, they continue de to divide despite having short telomeres. Telomeres shorten even further, and at some point, these critically short telomeres are fusion-prone, and um, cells die in a second proliferative barrier called replicative crisis. Therefore, senescence and crisis are two major barriers that restrict the replication capacity of a human somatic cell. If you look at a cancer cell, Cancer cells have to kind of solve that issue of the end replication, um, and they do that uh, into, in order to achieve replicative immortality. And they do that by activating a telomere maintenance mechanisms. Either they are activating the reverse transcriptase telomerase, which catalytically adds telomeric repeats to the end, or they're using the cellular recombination machinery in a process called alternative lengthening of telomeres. Whereas the majority of cancer cells use telomerase, um, but also stem cells are using telomerase. Um, only 10 to 15 percent of all cancer are using alternative lengthening of telomeres or ALT. So coming back to telomeres and why it's so challenging to sequence entire human telomeres. And there are four reasons for that. First, they are repetitive. They are these TTA, GGG repeats. Second, telomeres only contribute to a very small fraction of the human genome. Third, they can be quite long, so several tens of KB long. And finally, you hopefully have telomeres on every of your chromosome ends, and thereby your chromosome ends are protected. So that makes it kind of extremely challenging to sequence, map, and assemble hu entire human telomeres by classical Sanger sequencing as well as next-generation sequencing. On the other hand, long-read sequencing allows, in principle, to um, sequence entire human telomeres. And we are here doing nanopore sequencing because nanopore sequencing has the advantage that you can actually sequence very, very long molecules. And that is in particular important because we know that in some cancer samples, like alt positive cancer cells, you have very, very long telomeres. So how do we do that? We um, isolate high molecular weight genomic DNA, and then we um, anneal an adapter opposite of the G-bridge overhang, 
uh, perform a blunt end restriction enzyme um, digestion followed by DA, um, a, a DA tailing to prevent or reduce concatamine ligation, and yield a splint to the telomeric adapter followed by a ligation of the sequencing adapter to the splint and the telomeric adapter. And then we performed uh, sequencing. To say all the data that I would show you now is done on grid iron and with R9.4 uh, chemistry. So once the sequencing is done, we are making use of a, a customized telomer model to call our bases. We filter for read quality and identify the telomeric motifs. Furthermore, we are kind of uh, filtering for the correct read. So we are going from the telomeres into the direction of the centromere. So we would expect that we first encounter telomeric repeats, and then there should be some unique sequence. And we can use this unique non-telomeric sequence to then map our reads to specific um, chromosome arms. So as a proof of principle, we first started with a lymphoblasted each cell line HG002. And the reason for that is that HG002 is uh, part of the Genome in the Bottle Consortium, and uh, a well telomer to telomer uh, genome assembly exists for this cell line. So we performed the assay in duplicate, or in, replic in two replicates, and you can appreciate that on the left, um, um, you, you, that the mean, a uh, median uh, here shown as this dark blue black line, as well as the density. And uh, the mean telomer length as this dotted line is very similar between uh, both replicates. Moreover, the results also fit with uh, TRF um, analysis. I told you before that we can use a subtelomeric fragment of the reads to map our individual reads to, chromos to specific chromosome arms. And indeed, if we do that, um, we observe that we have uh, that different chromosome arms have differently long telomeres. So, for example, if you focus on the bottom left um, in the Q arms, the 1Q telomeres have a median telomere length of roughly 7.5, where the 2Q uh, chromosomes um, have a telomere length of roughly 5 kb. So there is quite a bit of heterogeneity within the telomere length distributions at different chromosome arms. Moreover, what we realized is that if you focus on the top panel 1 P chromosomes, that there is a quite a widespread of uh, t uh, different telomere lengths in at that specific locus. And if you think about, we are here now looking at a level of chromosome arm specific telomere lengths, and we are, and this is a diploid cell. So in principle, this cell has a, two alleles of the same chromosome arm. So we were wondering whether allele specific differences inherited from the mother and the father are actually contributing to this kind of heterogeneity at the chromosome arm specific level. So in order to do that, we tried to resolve allele specific telomere lengths. And we were lucky because for HC002, there's also genetic information available from the father and from the mother. So if we do that, um, you can appreciate that in um, chromosome 1P, this is the top left, um, one, you have a very strong separation between the maternal and the paternal allele, whereas, for example, in 3, uh, 3P, um, the two alleles have almost um, the same um, telomere lengths. So, indeed, um, the inherited allele-specific telomere lengths differences contribute to the heterogeneity in the intra-chromosome arm-specific telomere lengths. Similarly, the heterogeneity on the Chromosome arm specific telomere lengths are contributing to the bulk telomere length heterogeneity. So, encouraged by that, so, so um, in, in H, so, so this data on HC002 kind of highlights that with nanopore long read sequencing, we can determine bulk telomere sequencing at chromosome arm and even allele specific chromosome arm uh, telomere sequence, telomere length determination. So encouraged by that, we wanted to now see whether we can actually resolve telomere shortening. And to do that, we made use of IMA-90 human fibroblast cell lines that express the human papilloma virus E67. So these cells are defective for P53 and RB. Therefore, they bypass senescence and enter crisis at around population doubling 106. So we sampled at different time points, and then we performed a TRF analysis. And as you can appreciate, the telomere length is decreasing with ongoing population time uh, doubling, so with increasing cellular age. Moreover, if you're 
kind of uh, doing our nanopore sequencing telomere length determination. The median is also decreasing over time, or if you look at the density, you see that the shorter fragments are increasing um, in the later passages. And the mean telomere length here shown as this dotted line is moving to the left to the shorter fragments. If we focus and zoom in to the very short telomeres, so the telomeres below 1 kb of length, you can appreciate that at PD66, we have roughly 5% contributing to that read, whereas this increases to 18% in the latest passage. In contrast to that, the long telomeres, telomeres above 10 kb of length, are decreasing from 3% to 1%. So next, we wanted to, to ask whether we can resolve telomere shortening as a bulk. And for that, we plotted um, the mean telomere lengths against the population doubling and performed linear regression analysis. And you can appreciate that in, under the growth conditions that we are using, with the cell lines that we are using, um, chromosome, uh, telomeres are roughly um, um, shortening by 39 base pairs per population doubling. So I told you before that we can also look at chromosome arms, and we did. And what you see here is, again, that there is quite a lot of heterogeneity on the chromosome arm specific level, nevertheless. So you see, it, uh, you see telomere shortening over time. So for example, uh, if we are then uh, at chromosome 19 P, a Q, that's the one in the bottom, it has very short telomeres, but it's declining, and the 18 Q next to it have much longer uh, telomeres, and it's also declining. If we perform the linear regression analysis on the chromosome arm-specific um, um, telomeres, um, we, we also observe shortening rates between 12 and 64 uh, base pairs per, per population doubling in, in line with the uh, bulk analysis. So now we wanted to, to look at naturally aged uh, um, individuals, and for that we made use of uh, the SOC HHA Allen aging cohort consisting of fibroblasts obtained from donors at different age. So, and here you can appreciate that, oh sorry, the younger uh, individuals have longer telomeres um, than the older ones, with the exception of this 80-year-old fellow in blue, I guess. Um, so this trend is kind of um, uh, confirmed by performing linear regression analysis, suggesting again that um, telomeres get shorter with, uh, with, while, while you are aging. If um, we look then on the chromosome arm level, um, we again see this kind of heterogeneity, and we were puzzled whether there are some kind of conserved patterns to that. So we looked, took all the eight fibroblasts plus our IM90 samples, and checked whether there are some chromosome arms that are consistently longer or, or shorter than the average telomeres. And indeed, it looked like that there are some chromosome arms that are significantly longer than uh, the average telomere, like 18Q, and others that are uh, shorter than the average telomere, suggesting that there are chromosome arm-specific factors that influence telomere lengths. Furthermore, we had also access for six out of these eight fibroblast samples to induce pluripotent stem, stem cells, or iPSCs. IPSCs are using telomerase to maintain their telomeres, therefore the telomeres are uh, longer, and you can see that in all the IPSC samples, telomere length is increased by several kbs in length. Moreover, what was interesting to us is that the uh, median telomere length is reset to something like 8 to 10 kb, and that's independent on how long the telomeres were initially in the fibroblasts. Um, that should suggest to us that in these iPSCs, telomerase activity is in balance with telomere trimming, and that determines this, this new um, uh, level. Next, we wanted to know whether um, we can learn something on the telomerase activity and whether telomerase has some kind of um, affinity to shorter, longer, or um, to, to, to telomere lengths uh, in general as a substrate. And to do that, we performed linear regression analysis again. So we, do, uh, we plotted the difference between the chromosome arm-specific telomere lengths in iPSCs, again, uh, minus the, the one from fibroblast against the mean telomere lengths of fibroblast. You would expect that if telomerase is adding just the same amount of nucleotides to all the chromosomes, you would get a slope equal almost zero. If telomerase would add more nucleotides 
to the shorter telomeres, you would get a negative slope. And if telomeres would over elongate the already long telomeres, you would get a positive slope. And if we do that with our six match pairs, we always observe a negative slope, suggesting that telomeres indeed kind of preferentially elongates the shorter telomeres, and that's kind of lifting the overall telomere lengths. And finally, we wanted to have a look on how the telomere maintenance mechanism in cancer cells, so telomerase and ALT, is kind of shaping telomeres. And, and for that, we use five well-established telomerase and five well-established ALT-positive cancer cell lines. And you can appreciate that the uh, distribution in the telomerase-positive cancer cells are nicely bell-shaped, whereas the distribution of the ALT uh, telomeres are much wider. And of note, in the alt positive cancer cells, we observe telomeres that are longer than 80 kb of length. So it's really good that we are using nanopore sequencing because probably it's the only technology that can resolve these uh, lengths. Um, so these differences in distribution um, um, made us think that we may um, distinguish um, telomerase from alt positive cancer cells. By, uh, use, by, by, uh, by telomere sequencing. Um, and, um, and, and one measure to determine the dispersion of a distribution um, is um, the coefficient of variation or relative standard deviation. And that's defined as the uh, standard deviation divided by the mean. And if you plot the coefficient of variation against the mean telomere lengths, you nicely see that all the telomerase positive cancer cells are kind of clustering on the bottom and the alt positive cancer cells are uh, separated from that. And that may, uh, may indicate that um, you can eventually postulate the telomere maintenance mechanism um, based on telomere sequencing. And finally, um, as we are using native uh, DNA um, for our input, um, we can also get information about the methylation status of the CPG uh, sites closest adjacent to the telomeric sequence. And, um, uh, and you can see that in the control samples, as well as in the telomerase positive samples, the majority of the CPG islands are hypermethylated, uh, whereas in the alt positive samples in this um, example of chromosome 3Q um, are hypomethylated, suggesting that you get this additional information about the methylation um, in the subtelomer. So with that, uh, I'd like to sum up and... Um, and uh, what I showed you today. So I showed you that um, we can uh, determine the length and the um, composition of entire human telomeres using nanopore long read sequencing. Um, we observe heterogeneity on the bulk chromosome arm and even allele specific um, telomere level. Um, we can calculate uh, bulk and chromosome arm specific telomere shortening rates. Um, we, we can observe, or you can ask questions now, what's the effect of uh, inducing pluripotency on telomere lengths? Um, we, we have, you can investigate uh, differences of telomerase and alt, alt uh, mechanisms on telomeres in, in cancer. And you can obviously learn something about the methylation status of the subtelomere. With that, I'd like to um, thank the entire uh, Carl Zeta lab, especially Jan and Candy. Scott's team at Oxford Nanopore, especially Carly and Pri, who have been essential for that project, uh, all our other collaborators, my funding, and we posted a preprint, like I think last week, uh, on BioArchive, so please check it out. And um, with that, I'd like to thank you all for your attention. <laughs>